What's up guys, so I'm going to make a beat from start to finish, I'm going to create a melody, a loop, and then I'll bounce that out, and then I'll add drums and play the full thing. Um, I'm just going to get straight to it, so like the video if you end up liking it, and subscribe if you want to see more, and let's go. Uh, so first things first, I've got a bunch of different templates, and I definitely recommend this just to speed up your workflow if you haven't already got some, but yeah, I'm going to go to my loops one, and I'm thinking we'll start with some kind of pad almost as always. Um, I think I'll check out Analog Lab and see what they've got. Um, I feel like Analog Lab's definitely become a go-to for just a lot of producers, trap producers, so um, yeah, it's just a lot of cool sounds, so let's see what we can get. Oh, that would be a cool texture. Okay, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna leave this and then I'll come back to that once I've got some cores, so I've got that one saved on that track. Hmm, half time maybe. Okay, kind of like that. So just a reminder that the order of your plugins does make a difference, so yeah, I would mess around with that. Yeah, a bit of chorus on this. G minor, probably right. G. So I always just pull up a scale on Google. I know you FL guys, you have that kind of like the ghost keys in the back. And in Logic you can do a paintbrush thing where it only paints in the right notes of the scale, but I always just have this on my monitor just so I can see the scale that I'm in. Otherwise, I normally just start in C sharp minor because I know that off by heart, and then I'll just transpose it. Right. So I'm gonna add some effects to this. I always try to do this just to create movement just from the melody alone before I even add the drums because it just makes it so much easier to have a good bounce. Add a bit of delay. Bounce that out piano half time. And I always just bounce out my MIDI, which I might have said before, but just as much easier I find to manipulate these audio files, like if I want to reverse them, which I'll actually try now. But um, yeah, unless I think I'm gonna change the MIDI, I'll almost always just bounce it straight away. It's less CPU as well, so it won't stress your computer as much. I'm also thinking I should probably save this file because I do this every single time. <laughs> I'll like almost finish a whole project and then I'm like, okay, I should probably save now. So, oh, I hate naming things. I can make beats all day, but I can't name them. Ooh, I like that a little bit. So I don't like those last two, but that is okay. Let's... 
So again, just having stuff not perfectly line up on the grid is just gonna make it sound more real. Cool, I like that. Now, obviously we know that generally we want to EQ a lot of the low end out of our melodies just so that 808 hits once the drums come in. But even things like panning and making sure things are maybe panned a bit to the left or to the right and how much to the left or the right. And same thing with like a reverb like this, the width makes a big difference, so listen to this. You notice how the vocals sound way like just further out and spread out? And then watch this. Sounds really close, like inside. So I'd almost always recommend EQing a lot of your vocal textures and stuff out, unless it's the hook, but that's assuming again that you're not gonna have someone singing a hook. So the idea is that there's gonna be a vocal a vocalist or a rapper on top of this, and we don't want them competing for the same frequency, so. So last thing I think I'm gonna add, actually I still might add a flute, but I, I wanna get a little like percussive element. I always do this with my loops and melodies is I just go to Splice and um, I just search their drum loops and their groove loops and I'll just put in the tempo and I'll leave this playing and I'll just sift through them and then the things I like I'll add and I'll just chop it up and make it my own, so. What's cool about going through Splice uh, drum loops is just that it can help give you ideas for when you're about to add drums. So I already like this pattern. Now, I'm not gonna use it, well, as a standalone pattern. So again, I'll do my usual. see how little I'm actually using of these sounds like listen to this okay I think we can do something with that I like that um, I'm just gonna record a random thing and then I'll I'll edit the notes around I actually kind of like that, to be honest. I might keep that. It's not often you just mess around on the keyboard and actually get it first time, so. So I think we've got most of it. So last thing I do to create some kind of an intro, and I actually forgot we have another piano thing, but um, I'll take like the staple layers for something like a verse. So I'm guessing it's gonna be these ones. I'll leave the vocals and the bass. Cool, so I'll just take those and I'll experiment. So I'll bounce those into one or consolidate, I think is what it's called in FL. And then normally I'll just end up cutting out more frequencies and adding a lot of reverb. So then when it comes to the hook or the verse, it, it just, you feel it open up, you hear it open up. So let's see what this sounds like. So this is all those layers, but maybe, maybe if I have time. So again, I have remembered actually that we've got this piano from earlier, so let's see what this sounds like together. Uh, let's go to Ansi Save it. I'll hear this. Yeah, see it just opens up. Cool, so I think that's gonna be the melody for now. I'm just gonna bounce this out. Now, I'm obviously not gonna spend a bunch of time really arranging and structuring this when I haven't got the drums on yet, because I'll just be able to chop that and do that in the new project. So 
Um, I'm actually going to now delete all these extra tracks. Um, you don't have to do this, it is always a bit of a commitment because obviously I'm not going to get these back, but I just like a clean project file like this, so it's just the loop itself. Um, I'll just make sure I'm not peeking. And really quick, what I do even in my loops is I have a template just for sort of mastering the loop. Now, I try not to do too much, um, but just to make sure that the volume is up if need be by using a limiter and I'll probably add more RC20 just for that vintage effect and a compressor so and it sounds more tedious than it is I'm just opening a new template but uh, this is what I've got for drums that and yeah so you can see like I've already got like a simple two-step pattern just stuff like that um, a riser, just things that I found myself using almost every single time. So it just saves me having to like find all those sounds, load them up again. You know, it just makes it much easier. So, so yeah, just remembered we're in B minor. So remember to change your drums, make sure your drums are also in key, not just your melodies. It does make a big difference. So I can already hear a bit of a pattern in my head. So let's see. And just a pro tip, do these little stops every now and then if you want more of a bounce, you'll see what I mean here. Cool, now let's get an 808. So I've just changed the hi-hat, doing the two-step, I like this one more. a little bit of delay on the second hi-hat doing the accents. Oh, I kind of like this perk. Maybe for like a part of the verse. I think I'll keep this. And then a snare. Ooh, I can hear it now. Yeah, I can definitely hear it. Accidents happen. Uh, what was it? You have the tail end of your 808 carrying over your kicks try pull it back so that it stops just as your kick hits it just adds a lot more punch now last thing always make sure that your 808s are in key so you can do this just by pitching it up a few octaves and just hearing it more clearly So that one could actually go up. Yeah.
velocity. Those higher notes, I always tend to bring the velocity down because they'll always be perceived as being a lot louder just because the high end frequencies are always sharper than low end. That's why if you have a really low sounding 808 and it's very muffled, it's not gonna sound loud even if technically the decibels are the same as something that's in a higher octave. So um, that's just a pro tip as well. Cool, so I think we're almost ready to start arranging. I just wanna see if I can get a short 808 to work, so let's see. Cool, I like that. So I think we'll use that, that short 808 for the verse, so let's just start arranging now. It's a little trick I like to do, and I, I hear people like Wonder Girl do this, but um, just balance out your drum section. I, sometimes I do this with the 808, but I might just do it without, and just label it like drum texture or something. And I'll just EQ a bunch of the highs and lows out, so sound like this. And I'll probably add a bunch of reverb as well. Yeah, so it's just, it's a nice transition. So I'm thinking because the intro is a little bit long and these days you generally want the hook to come in pretty quick. You can see this is quite a long time to wait. I think I'm gonna move this section with the bass to somewhere like a pre-chorus or a bridge a bit later on. Um, and I'm just gonna do this and move the rest closer. So now things will just come in a little bit quicker. Mmm, yeah, I like that. I can really hit Don Tolliver over this. And stop. And the kick. making some final adjustments. Um, but yeah guys, I think this is the beat. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with it. So we went from this melody and, and from these drums. So yeah guys, I really appreciate you listening. I'm gonna play the full beat for you now. If you like this, then make sure you like the video and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. I also plan to do more tutorial type videos, so you can always comment below if there's certain things you wanna see or you wanna see me like cook up a certain style of beat. Uh, but yeah, I'm having so much fun with these, so I look forward to doing more and just getting better and documenting that journey. So anyway, enough talking, let's play the beat. Blue Infinity.